All right, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the number one podcast in the nation, in the country, in the world, y'all, in the whole world. Actors endurance, y'all. You see it. You see it with the best host in the game. Come on now. You got your girl, Shanette Wilson, and then partner in crime, y'all. Marlon the Great Hargrave. Put some great on his design. Yes, yes, yes. Now, listen, y'all. We are back with it. Another, another wonderful episode because we're always giving you tips say what's up to the people marlon say what's up to the people what's up to the people y'all know what time it is y'all know how we do giving you that great information as we normally do y'all know how we do man that's that's what we're here for we're here for for the people now we have a great show coming up i hope you guys uh have a notebook in a pen so you can write this stuff down because we're always giving you you know tips and guess what? We got some more. So guess what? Uh, Marlon, let them know what we are, what we talking about today. We're going to give you guys our top three techniques to do to get you landing your auditions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our top three techniques to win an audition. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Like she said, get your pen and paper out. We got some good stuff for you, man. You're listening to Actors Endurance, a podcast that inspires actors to never give up on their passion and find ways to continue to grow within the entertainment industry. My name is Shanette Wilson, and I'm an actress, and my co-host is Marlon Hargrave, and he is a teaching artist. And together, we are Actors Endurance. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all. So I hope you grab and a piece of paper or even a pencil, a marker, a crayon, whatever. Cut yourself and write it in blood. Whatever you got to do, you know, so you can take down these notes here. So we're giving you guys today on the Actors Endurance podcast your top three techniques so you can win in the audition. Now, we didn't say book the role because sometimes. Look, sometimes you don't, but what you want to do is win in the audition. You want to be memorable. You want them to call you back. You want them to remember you for future. Come on now. You want to make an impression. So your top three tips. We're just going to go straight in because, you know, we're always here for a good time, not a long time. So number one, bam, bam. Let them know what it is, Marlon. Come on. Script analysis. Y'all know it's my favorite. You know it's my go-to. And me being a specialist in this field, it is highly, highly, highly recommended. I believe that script analysis, you hear me say it a lot. I think that it's a part of the, the, it's a lost part of the art form. And people take it for granted, but oftentimes it is the reason why you do or do not get a role. So... You know, uh, that's a big thing for me. So in the script analysis, one of the first things that I do is I look for the character's emotions. Hmm. got to look for the emotions because if there are no emotions, then there's no fight, there's no conflict, and thus there is no reason for an audience to go and see this particular performance. So, you know, I definitely want to be able to map out your emotions and map them out appropriately and map them out correctly because if you do it incorrectly then you know it's like you learn wrong you do wrong (laughs) that is a fact you learn wrong you do listen y'all listen up he's dropping knowledge dropping knowledge yes you have to find the character's emotions in order to play the character and portray the character in the right medium you know so yeah, you look for the character emotions and you also look for the character's nuances. Okay, is the character a quirky character? Are they a cynical character? You know, you got to look for these little nuances. Are they a smart ass? Um, there, there's so many different things that you can find. And guess where it is, y'all? Guess where it is? Du, 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 du. It's in the writing. 
<laughs> yes, it's right there in the script. The writer has put everything that you need to know in the script. So make sure that you pay close attention to the writing, which is why you should read it multiple times and in different at different times of day, in different states of mind, um, in, in, in different areas, you know, you should constantly read the script and reread it so that you find these little new that are specific to your character. Or you should also pay attention to the other characters' nuances too, so you know how to respond correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, nuances are huge. Nuances is what separates you from the rest of the actors in the world, to be honest with you. And the more that you find, the better off you will be as far as developing your character is concerned. So I highly, highly, highly recommend script analysis. You also, uh, in script analysis, we also have to look at um, uh, finding the character's objective. So if you don't know what that is, it's what the character is fighting for. If you don't know what the character is fighting for, it's almost impossible to play the scene. So... Uh, know what your character's objectives are for, um, know why they are, are pursuing those objectives, and then what do they do to actually go about uh, following those projectives. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk English today now. Dang on. Yeah. All right. Following your objectives and pursuing your objectives, you have to know what's blocking you, and then you have to know your tactics on how you actually go about getting the job done. Yes, yes. And y'all, if you guys have also never taken a script analysis class and you've never, you know, you, you never went to actorsendurance.com and, you know, emailed Marlon and said, uh, hey, you know, what is what what exactly am I doing? What it is, is what do you want? That's like real simple. What do you want in this scene? Everywhere you go as a person, you want something. When you're interacting with somebody, you always want something. So Take that, redirect it, put it into the script, and figure out what your character wants. Now, moving on. Mm -hmm. Number two, bold choices. Bold choices, y'all. Now, what yes. are some, right? Let, let them know, Marlon. Let them know. What are some bold choices? Uh, <clears throat> bold choices are choices that an actor can make that. Um, seems like it's bigger than the script, but it actually enhances the script. A lot of people want to play it safe and say, well, I don't want to do this because, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to get it wrong. But oftentimes you have to make a bold choice so that you can stand out from the other people. Again, you're going to have some skilled actors out here who know what they're doing and they're going to know how to add the nuances. They're going to be using checkoff and, and, the uh, uh, using triggers, using um, uh, your inner monologues or your inner stories and things to help back up that role that you're trying to get. So, you know, you, you definitely better be getting on stuff like that. Yes, for sure. Now, when you're making bold choices, you, know, you, know, you obviously, listen, anytime that you're auditioning, you always use so we'll probably say that multiple times. You have to use what is actually in the script, what is written down. You do not want to make things up because then it doesn't make sense. The writer took a lot of time to come up with all these different thoughts and ideas, and it was rewritten. You know, um, it was given to other people to break that down and then given back to the writer to rewrite it again. So there's a lot that went into this script. So use the script. Now, use the given of the script in order to make these bold choices. If your character, like we said in the other one, has these little nuances in the quirky, you can make a bold choice to play on one of the lines and make it a little, you know, maybe in your thoughts, it can you know, your so many different things, but use the given circumstances of the script, y'all. Now, the next one, backstories. Backstories, backstories, backstories. Now, why is back? Why are backstories important? Think about this in your own personal life. When you see, say, when you were a little kid, you remember uh, the ice cream truck song when you were walking around playing in the neighborhood. Now, as an adult, 
If you're driving down the street and you hear the same ice cream truck song, the first thing you do is think about when you were a little kid and you heard that. That's your backstory. You have a memory. So you have to create that for your character in order for them to have like an actual life. They didn't just, they weren't just born on that page 33. You know, they were born a long time ago. So you have to give them that backstory. Now, the backstories relate to the characters now. When, uh, can you give them a good example? Um, I'm just trying to think of like... Well, with it, when you're doing a backstory, I really try to go directly from the script. So um, uh, if you come in, if they say you're coming in the scene and you're angry and you don't know what you're quite upset about, you can go into the backstory and say, well, I'm angry because it's raining and I don't like the rain, you know, and I can kind of just make it make sense for myself. And that's all you're really trying to do when you're creating a backstory. You're trying to make it make sense so that you can play it in truth. Yes. So you don't want to go too far outside of the circumstances, the given circumstances, which is what the, the uh, dramatist, as we call them, but the writer, but everyone else says the writer writes. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that when you go in there and grab that back or you create a backstory that you are going directly with what is related on the page itself. Yes, for sure, for sure. So definitely, y'all, create these backstories, give your character a little more depth, a little more history, a little more life. Um, and then, of course, you always, 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 especially once you've done the work, you want to trust your instincts. Because if you've done the work, you're already into the mode, into the the vibe, into the 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 headspace of the character. So you will instinctively want to do certain things because of all of the work that you've done. So please trust your instincts, y'all. Trust your instincts to do, say, be whatever just kind of comes naturally. Once you've done the work, trust your instincts. Just kind of go with the flow, you know, just go with the flow with it yes uh and also if you work hard enough you can actually create the character's instincts so if you really get to know your character and you're really especially if you're on a series and you know you have started to really develop that character then you can start to trust the character's instincts which is what you're really supposed to do when you're trusting your instincts you trust your instincts in the process but you still kind of got to leave yourself out of it. You have to use like your analytical instincts. You have to use uh, uh, instincts that when you are actually in the character, you have to feel what that character would do and not necessarily what you would do, but what that character would do in the same situation. You know, that is what makes the world go around is that people make different decisions. So. Uh, you just want to be as truthful to the character that's written on the page as you possibly can. Uh, I know that a lot of people nowadays will say, well, you're just playing yourself. I disagree. It's not autobiographical. It's not your name. You know, if I'm looking on a script and it says Bill, I know I'm not Bill. You know, so I know that I have a character to create and I know that I need to be truthful to that script. Yes. Very well said by celebrity acting coach, also artist, the GOAT, the great Marlon Hargrave. Um, yes, and put some great on his name. Number three, moving on. Yes, okay. This is so important in TV and film, y'all. So important. Stillness. Still. Yes. Woo. This is a, uh, this is prop, man, I'll tell you what, this is a, this is really a game changer. You have to master this no matter what you have to. And at first it's going to be a struggle because you don't even realize how much you actually move, especially if you come from theater or if you come from, um, uh, an area in the world where people talk with their hands and they're animated. Listen, so stillness, y'all take advice from Marilyn Monroe and make love to the camera. Why people loved her so much is because she made love to the camera. She made sure the camera loved her. 
I mean, absolutely just adored Marilyn Monroe. Exactly, exactly. And it's everything. Like when you're trying to seduce someone, you understand what that is. When you're really into them and you really truly want to seduce them, you know what it takes. So do the same thing when you're on camera, when you're portraying these roles, when you're, when you're performing, you know, like make love to the camera. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. And too much movement is just that. It's too much. So imagine that you're on camera and then you see somebody, hey, how you doing? Hey, come in. Can I talk to you for a second? So I was doing this and yeah, it's just way too distracting. So you have to trust your stillness because stillness is the power in film. It really is. It helps you to concentrate on what's being said as opposed to what's being done. So definitely trust your stillness. And the problem is, is that a, a lot of people just don't know what to do with their body. So if you're somebody where you talk with your hands a lot, this is very distracting, hands in the face. And every time you move, someone's eyes is going to go to where the movement is. So you want to be able to keep your hands straight or keep them in a neutral position. And maybe every once in a while, you may do this or you may do that. And it's not really taken away from it but you're able to not be so distracting i hope that makes sense yes for sure definitely, definitely. Let's practice that at home for sure stillness is very important and of course acting is all in the eyes now it starts in the mind because whatever you're thinking comes through to your eyes so therefore make sure you have clear clear thoughts and it's going to come right through to your eyes and you know that when you're talking to people in regular everyday conversation you know you just know because you're looking at them you're looking at them or you're listening to the inflections of their voice but a lot of times all you have to do is they say the eyes are the window to the soul so you know what someone's thinking you're just looking at them so just make sure you let your eyes tell the story work on your blinking we didn't put that in there but work on your blinking so that you don't blink as much unless it's so be really mindful of blinking too much when you watch tv and you watch professionals they hardly blink unless it's on purpose so make sure you like yeah. mm -hmm. that's hard that is hard that is something that you actually have to work on you have to be aware of it you have to know whether your eyes dry up real quick and then sometimes you'll have that makeup when they put the makeup on it seeps under the skin and then the oil starts to push the water out. It's just, it gets bad. And you'll see it with some actors. You'll see that they, they seem to be teary eyed or one eye seems to be teary. Oftentimes it's makeup or um, dry eyes, things like that. So you definitely want to use your eyes, but not your eyebrows, not this. We're not acting like this. Are you kidding me? What do you mean, man? <laughs> Yeah, that face may be a little too much for him. Got to back that up. Back <laughs> the facial expressions up. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, stillness in the face and stillness in the body. Stillness in the face. Because people have a tendency to talk like this, and then they'll move on, and all of these little quirks and people to talk out the side of their mouths. Yes, yeah, so you have to kind of know when that's accepted or when the you know, if it's too big. So you have to work on these these things at home. Work on uh, when you get smaller roles or if you're doing independent films or or a student film or something, you may want to try some of these things out. But for the most part, if you have a camera, do it at home. Do it at home. Look at what your facial expressions look like. Make sure it's not too big because <laughs> you're going to look ridiculous at the end of the day, especially if you're a stage actor. So you got to be able to bring that down if you if you're uh, very used to, you know, uh, being a live performer. I'll say that live performance you have to be a little bit bigger. For sure, that's something I'm still working on. I have a tendency to always put my eyebrows up. Yes, <laughs> yes, and uh, Stanislavski says move with purpose. Or, or actually, I believe the quote was "Don't move a muscle." unless you have to. I think it's something like that. It's probably loosely quoted throughout, uh, you know, 100 years or whatever he's been around. So 
<laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, it, it don't move a muscle unless you have to move with purpose. They all are the same thing. So that's why it's very important for you to know what your actions are. So I can stay still. And if one of the actions was um, uh, he ponders, then I may be able to do something like that and then keep that movement pretty simple and maybe go back to a neutral again. But I'm able to use those actions and keep them uh, according to what the script says. And then I can trust the rest just to be still. Exactly. Exactly. Well, stillness is a game changer. If you cannot master stillness, you're going to have a hard time, a really challenging, difficult time in television and film. I can guarantee you that. So you guys make sure that stillness is one of the main things. So in your everyday life, too, you can work on your facial expression. Just be mindful of them. You know, hey, um, and this, this isn't my acting face. I hear something. What do you hear? What? There goes my eyebrows again. I'm always making that face. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. The smoke. Okay. The smoke. All right, we are here for the Adam of the day, your acting tip of the moment. I know y'all have been waiting. I know you was waiting for your Adam of the day. And the acting tip of the moment is, since we're talking about what you need to do to have a strong audition, before you have a strong audition, you have to have a great headshot. And you have to look like your headshot when you go into your audition. And a lot of people really, uh, sometimes they'll miss that, but if you have weight fluctuations, if you get darker and lighter, or if you change your hairstyles and, and uh, beards or anything like that, then you know you have to be aware. So if you have your headshot, and let's say that I have a beard on my headshot, and then I shave down to a goatee, then or I clean shave, uh, when I go into that audition, I could possibly lose the audition because I no longer fit the role. So. Be aware of that uh, and give yourself a chance to win on all levels. Yes, yes. That's a great tip, Marlon. That's a great tip. Love it, love it. Your headshot is everything, y'all. Your headshot is everything. And, you know, find a great photographer. I always recommend, especially if you're in Rhode Island. But, hey, he may travel to you or you can travel to him. Abu. And that's VQuest One Studios. That's up there in Rhode Island. VQuest One Studios. Abu, amazing photographer. The man will get you right and for the right price, too. Can't beat it. Yes, for sure, y'all. Okay, okay. Now uh, that the smoke has cleared and, you know, <laughs> Marlon always blowing shit up, uh, blowing stuff up. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> you like radio, huh? Check us out on Blazing 87.5. <laughs> we on our radio podcast. Uh, we, you know, it's a little bit more doltish over there, but we're keeping it PG-13 over here. For sure. For sure. Um, anyway, uh, what we're going to do is move on to the quote of the day. So this quote here, oh, man, it's coming from, of course, an amazing talent, this one here is from George Clooney. Now, George Clooney says, I had to stop going to auditions thinking, oh, I hope they like me. I had to go in thinking I was the answer to their problem. Come on, y'all. When you go into auditions thinking I am the answer to their problem, you can't get no better than that because then you're more focused on helping them. You get out of your own head. You know, like, oh, pick me, pick me. Pick me. No, 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 no. You're all about giving the best performance you can give, making love to the camera and focused on helping them pick the right person, you, for that role. So it don't get no better than that. Thank you so much, George Clooney. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, and he should know. I mean, he went through the ringer earlier in his career. He had a, a lot of pilots that got canceled or never got picked up, rather. Uh, so, you know, he was auditioning. I mean, at, at some point, he was obviously mastering his auditions. So, 
but it was getting over the hurdle of actually getting this show picked up. And of course, once his show started to get picked up, uh, he, you know, he had a great career after that. I haven't heard much from him lately, but, you know, he had a nice run. Very nice run, actually. Shout out to George. I worked with him a couple of times earlier in my career. Cool guy. Cool guy. Cool guy. Very nice. So shout out to George Clooney, y'all. And, you know, we're here for a good time, not a long time. But since we love y'all, it's time for the bonus. So uh -oh. yeah, what we did was we just want to help y'all out and give y'all a bonus tip. Bonus tip for auditioning? Dress appropriately. Let them know. Yes. Let them know. Yeah. All right, you can go. Uh, so when you're dressing, you want to have the likeness of the character without actually, and this is if you can. So, you know, if you're playing a construction worker or something like that, you can wear a T-shirt, but don't come out here with your hard hat and then, you know, you're showing, hey, I got a hammer. And no, that's not what that's all about. Even in, in person, don't wear a tool belt. You know, it, it's, it's not like that, but you want to have the likeness. Now, on the flip side of it, I believe if you're auditioning for a lawyer, you don't wear a T-shirt. You wear a button down. You wear something uh, that's sort of putting you, it, it's giving you a visual of what could be. So, you know, you, you don't want them to have to try to imagine you in, an, in, in, in a button down shirt. You want to wear the button down and then have them imagine you in the role. So, again, you really want to make sure that you're giving yourself a chance to win, dressing appropriately, no loud colors, you know, wear, wear neutral colors if you're not really decided on what you're going to, you know, uh, because some auditions, you know, if you're just playing customer number one, like, how do you dress? You know what I mean? So you want to be able to have no whites, no blacks, um, and possibly not any jewelry, but if it, if it lends to the role, yes, but don't overdo it, you know? Yeah, and like you said, don't overdo it, y'all. Keep it simple. Keep it really, really simple. You want to dress in the area of the role, but no crazy costumes or anything like that. Keep it simple. And uh, also, avoid using props if you don't have to. That's another thing. Avoid using props with your costume. You know, don't go with the, thes the thes like you said, or well, the tool belt or the tethoscope. The tethoscope. I, I'm saying it wrong. But you know what I'm <laughs> A doctor or a nurse don't do that <laughs> don't do that just y'all keep it simple focus on becoming that character focus on the acting okay that's what you do so listen y'all we're here for a good time not a long time and we love y'all so thank you for joining us for another episode of actors endurance the podcast and listen y'all you know we're all over the place so we're coming to you on the first and the 15th of every month actorsendurance.com check out the website and if you haven't gotten any merch listen we got clothes for actors use your t-shirt as an icebreaker okay you can use your shirt as an icebreaker to start a conversation when you're out there networking because that's important and listen if you haven't taken any classes you need to hit up the Marlon Hargrave he is the celebrity artist here all over the world because you can hit him up on zoom so he's everywhere okay actorsendurance at gmail.com and then Tuesdays and Thursdays we're coming at you on the radio 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then on Sundays from 3 to 4 Eastern Standard Time. So we're coming at you on the radio, all things entertainment business, okay? Okay. So, yeah, we're all over the place, man. Um, Yeah, Actors Endurance. We, we getting ready to be out of here. Uh, you know, you got any last words, Marl? You got any last words for the people? Yes, I do. Peace! <laughs> All right, so listen, we'll catch y'all on the next one.